What is poppin' everybody? You got Count Yari here, and we're diving into it. Okay, this is Road Reforces Eternally for Snake and you. Uh, it goes for the U-turn on the goal, but immediately, apparently turn 1 already happened, as very crucially, Root Reef superfangs, and superfangs again the Celix. The reason this is crucial is because, um, it actually looks like Eternally doesn't deal with, first of all, this goal bad too well. His Heatalisk is the best way. He's gonna curse it up, so Rodri is kind of forced into Slowbro. Uh, he gets up the rocks once again. He could defog and then go into Slowbro, but he just goes hard into it. It has regen. Anyway, he gets Heavy Slam. There's absolutely nothing. I'm expecting a Fire Blast here, actually. I, if I were if I were Rotary, I would actually fire off a Fire Blast at this point. Uh, just so uh, Heatalisk isn't the safe switch in. And I'm not expecting him to go hard into Incineroar because it is his only Vanillix switch in. In fact, talking about Vanillix, it has an extremely good matchup for Sternally. Um, I'm assuming it is Barry in Cinemar from the preview because otherwise he doesn't have an ice cream switch in. Also, side point: I did see this game mostly live, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell you what I thought at the times, like what I thought the sets would be would be. So he goes hard into Delmice, which is why Fire Blast was so nice. Obviously, Scald could have burned this as well, but this being down to 31% is awesome. He could go to Golbet, but I could see Eternally knocking here and Rody wanting to keep the the, the, the Ether Light on Golbat, so Rotary could go out into Steel Valley, that's, just, that's what I would do, to uh, scout for the knock or even the power whip, like any any move he really wants to go for. Even if he goes for EQ, he can then double out. That is assuming this is Bandit Delmice, which on this team I definitely would not be surprised. He doesn't need a spinner since he has a Zato anyway. He does go to Steel Valley on a knockoff, gets crit, which sucks. Um, there's a lot of, lot of damage. And he could just pivot out here, or he could defog, but I'm assuming since his goal bet is defog, that he's not defog Silvali himself. He's probably the Toxic. He is double defog, actually. Stays in on another knockoff, and now his Silvali is basically dead. Um, now, good news is he didn't really need it first eternally. It didn't do too much. Um, obviously, it was a nice pivot, but it wasn't that necessary. Uh, looking at Rotary's team, he's actually very weak to the Heliolisk, which is one of the, you know, out of his team, the only thing that outspeeds is, is uh, Aerodactyl, which we don't know the setup yet, but uh, presumably carries EQ, which should be able to kill it. But nothing else outspeeds it, unless it is Scar Vanillux. But I think that's his only breaker, so I'm assuming that's either Ice Cold Plate or Specs. Um, he does have a. Um, as he flash cannons on Zatu. He does have a Torterra, which will be able to take all the T bolts, but Hyper Voice is such a good move versus Rotary, especially now that Silvali Steel is down to 4%. Um, I could see him try to preserve this, exactly, goes harder to Arrow, which is interesting. I'm wondering if it's Rooks or not. It takes 33% from the Nightshade, which means it will not be a 3 hit but it will be close enough. I wonder if he actually he pursues on the Zat, which stays in, takes Helmet, takes the U-turn, and says Aerodactyl is almost dead. As I was going to say, I wonder if this Aerodactyl carries Roost. I'm not sure what kind of damage that is from the top of my head. It could be Bandit. Uh, because it's only 40 base power if he stays in, right? So it could be bad if he did not show life warp damage either. So very well played by Eternally. He needs to keep up the the momentum basically because he can't let the Vanillux in at any point. Um, so like if this Zatu was roosting or whatever and Rotary actually doubled the Vanillux, he almost got a kill. Now I'm still assuming this Incineroar is AV or Berry, so it will be able to take a few blizzards, but still not that well. Anyway, he U-turns out. He's probably going to go out into his Steelix. He could intimidate it with Incineroar first if he really wanted to. He could go out into Passimian. Because Close Combat will kill this. Um, I don't think he can lock himself to Close Combat. It's a problem though. Because if Slurber comes in, Slurber is a bit of a problem for Eternally to switch into. Uh, we haven't seen this set yet either. All we have seen is Fire Blast. Which, you know, presumably it's uh, AV in that case. But we never know. Uh, knockoff will kill this as well, and will hit the AV Slowbro if that does come in. It will kill the uh, Silvali Steel as well as Knockoff, EV Light, and Golbet, so that's a good play. He does click Knockoff, it's Colberberry Slowbro with Fire Blast, which is, you know, unique, I would say. I've, I've never seen it before, but it's, it's definitely working out so far. Anyways, I could see him Fire Blasting again. Um, you could Scald, but you really don't want to give the Heatalisk a free switch, and it's a problem, because it's such a big problem to your team. Specs Hyper Voice does like 45 to your uh, Torterra, um, if it's just like max HP with some spadef. He does go to Heatalisk on oh, the Scald. Ooh, that's exactly why Scalding there was a, a sort of dangerous play. I understand why he did it, because um, like the Fire Blast was kind of obvious too. But yeah, he does Hyper Voice on the Torterra, does 48%. 
And now he has to synthesis up and eternally just get a free switch into whatever he wants to. He actually stays in to get off mo one more synthesis because he only has eight and now he's already used one. He's going to have to use another one in order to keep checking this heal disc. So the synthesis on this for Terra are going to be extremely important to keep in check. Um, he only has six left. Has to go hard to Aerodactyl on the Zatu. Does he U-turn again? He does. More chip on the Aerodactyl down to 29%, which means uh, two more Rocky Helmets will kill it actually. He goes into Pismian once again, and once again I think knockoff is like no drawback. Uh, well the drawback is that Slowbro is in, so you could U-turn here? I don't know if I like that play, but you could. I think it's actually fine, because Aerodactyl is at such a low amount of HP, that U-turn into Rocky Helmet will probably kill it off, and getting rid of Aerodactyl is extremely good for your healing list. So U-turning is not a bad play here, I don't think. Um, your ceiling sadly is pretty low, so that's not going to be able to check this Aerodactyl very well, but... Goes into Slowbro on the knockoff once again. It's not doing anything, <laughs> even without the Colberberry, because Slowbro is just that bulky. Once again, I think Fire Blasting is the play, but this time, uh, this time I, I think Eternally is more inclined to stay in because of the play he, he made last time. Basically, he went hard to heal and Rotary doesn't want Helis to get a free switch it again. So I could see Eternally predicting the Fire Blast and staying in, but then again, that's damage on Pasimian, and Pasimian is never going to recover that off. So I don't know if that's worth it. Mm -hmm. Also, I think this is going to be a pretty long game from the looks of it. Knocks off again on the Fire Blast, exactly. 34% does not burn, which is actually pretty crucial as well. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think you Fire Blast again if you're the slower here. Because even if he knocks off again, you could just go to... Um, well, not much to be honest. But I, I don't know, I would Fire Blast again. If actually Slack off is probably the play, isn't it? But then Healer still gets a free switch in. I don't know, it's tough. It's pretty tough. Does go into Healer Disc on the Slack off. Yep. That was to be expected. Hmm. What do you do if you're slower here? You have to go out to Torterra again. And Eternally is just gonna hyper poise again. I don't know if Slower actually lives a hyper poise, but I don't think it's worth it for staying in anyway, because he's not AV. So like even if he does 80%. Uh, that's still not worth it, because then Pesimian will become a huge threat to your team. So yeah, you have to go to Terra here on the Hyper Voice, I'm assuming. Yes, makes sense. 49% this time. It's doing so much damage. He has to synthesis again. I wonder if Returnal is going to Hyper Voice again to get the... Uh... No, he doesn't. To get one more synthesis out of it. As Rotary actually clicks EQ, which means the next time... Uh... Wow, as he stays in on the Zatu, which doesn't go for Toxic or whatever it has... Um, I was going to say, next time the Sorterra actually clicks... Uh, sorry, the Zealus clicks a move, the Sorterra is actually going to be 2 at ko but now it doesn't anymore. Slowbro gets Toxic, which is... It's actually okay, because it does regenerate it anyway, and it's never staying in for more than a few turns. Once again, it comes down to does he click Scald or Fire Blast. It's very nice that he has Fire Blast in his uh, move pool, because... You know, it's 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 threatening Eternal teams. Eternally teams really hard right now. But I think, uh, I think I would Scald here. I don't think Eternally is risking the heal this, but he might. He might. He Nightshade on the Fire Blast. Remember, he only has so many Fire Blasts. He's already used three of them. He only has eight. Either way, his Sloper is getting really weakened, and I don't think you stay in on the next Nightshade, because you will take a lot of toxic damage as well. You will take 18 plus 25. He does stay in. On the heal list, does he Fire Blast? He slacks off. Okay, well, it makes sense, but still, this heal list is such a big threat to his team now. But you have to go to Terra again, and now you definitely die to Hyper Voice. He could sack off Sufali Steel here, but he doesn't. Goes to Torterra. I think he's used four synthesis at this point, maybe three. It would be nice if uh, Doc actually <laughs> went with his mouse over to Torterra more, but I know he did earlier, but I missed it then. Anyway, he synthesis on the uh, on the Delmite, which is basically gonna get a kill because you can't let this Torterra get knocked off. You really can't. A knockoff is not really any drawback from this Delmice anyway. And staying in on a banded power whip is just madness too. Especially because I don't even know if this knocks out Delmice at 31%. I know Tutera is pretty strong, and especially Boothammer has a 120 base power. But still, it's uh, Delmice is bulky. But yeah, I'm expecting a knockoff to come out right now. He doubles it to Zatu on Silvali. I... <sighs> 
I understand why, right? Because if you manage to kill off the Savali right now, then Vanillux comes in and you don't want your Resident or taking any damage. He actually goes hard into Vanillux. Let's take the Nightshade. Now, once again, I understand why. Because Vanillux would have come in and clicked Blizzard on something. Uh, on the Delmice, anyway. And Eternally would have been in trouble. But he has the Incineroar anyway. Um, I understand it's only a limited amount of times so he can take it. But still, unless it isn't a bulky Incineroar. If it's not bulky Incineroar, then this Vanillux is just going to keep claiming. Let's see. Incineroar comes in on the Intimidate, with the Intimidate. Blizzard does 43. Yeah, that's an offensive Incineroar, and it's not going to take another Blizzard well at all. Um, wow. That's probably SDZ move then. He has Bandit Delmice, Specs, Helolisk, Z move, Incineroar, Rocky, Helmet, Zatu, Leftovers. He has he has Scarf, Band, and Specs on the team. That's actually funny. <laughs> As Rotary, he kind of has to switch out because his Vanillix is too... Is worth too much at this point, basically. Too valuable, I was gonna say. Um, as eternally, I don't know if he stays in on another hill turn. He could double two, but he can't really double into anything on a blizzard. So, I guess you knock off a uh, darkest lariat. Yeah, it is darkest lariat. Let's say if, it, if it's Z move, it's probably darkest lariat. Um, and Z darkest lariat at this point is probably gonna kill the Colbat. Does he scout for it? He doesn't. Oh well, he roosts actually. That's <laughs> that is a scout because you outspeed the Incineroar. It's just that slow. Once again, Helisk is in, and it can just lock its home with the Hyper Voice. There really isn't any reason not to. It will kill anything. He actually doubles his Zatu on the Torterra. Which, I mean, it gives Zatu a Roost, I guess. I was going to say that doesn't do anything, but it gives Zatu a Roost. Torterra can stay in on a Toxic anyway. If this thing gets Toxic, he legit just loses to Helisk. Or he loses a Mom every single turn. So he can't risk that. Um, I could see him double into Vanillix here. He goes to Golbat. On the U-turn, yeah. That's why Eternally kind of had to U-turn, because if Vanillax came in on the Roost, um, Eternally was, was screwed. Golbat comes in, uh, sorry, Steelix comes in on the Golbat once again. I could see him just go for rocks, just letting this uh, Steelix get some more lefties, which will make it be able to take on the <laughs> the Aerodactyl a bit better. Anyways, he goes for rocks, the Golbat could just defog again. He did some damage to Steelix again. They kind of check each other. <laughs> I always like this matchup. As he goes for Curse again with the Steelix. But Super Fang is still doing the same amount of damage. He goes to Safali Steel. I'm assuming it's gonna flame tower it. Surf. He actually carries Surf. Which is really interesting. And he manages to kill off the Steelix, which means once he defog these away with his goal bat at some point, um, the rocks are gone. This thing is just gonna U-turn on the Silvali. He has no reason not to, it will kill. And he will get momentum if Rotary decides to keep this. Goes to Slowbro, I'm assuming he's just going to U-turn. Yep. And now he can get in either Delmise or Helisk. I think Helisk is fine. Wearing down those, uh, yeah, wearing down those synthesis from the Torterra. Mm. So the game they're playing right now is, uh, Rotary is trying to chip every Mon from Eternally really harshly with its Mons, but it's not going very fast. Where Eternally is just trying to stall out all the synthesis from Rotary, uh, from Torterra, obviously. And then Helix will just go wild. <laughs> There's like nothing Rotary can do at that point. So he has to he has to make some predictions with Slowbro mostly. With the Scald or Fire Blast in order to do some good damage to Eternally's team. He also has no Scarf on the team. Like his team is his team is very slow. He has an Aerodactyl, which is obviously very fast, but the rest of his team is just I'm not assuming Golbat is very fast. Like very speed uh not very EV to speed. He goes to Golbat on the Helix Hyper Voice? Like, of course it's Specs. What are you doing? He just lost a lot of health to your Golbat for no reason. I don't understand this play. He already went for Hyper Voice. You know he was locked in. Because you know the damage. You know he is Specs. Um, I'm not sure why he made this play. I think he should have gone through Torterra. You only take 6% from Rocks anyway. And you can... At that point, you might be able to double into Vanillux on, on the Zatu. But he stays in once again to... Defog. Okay. Well, I guess rocks are off the field forever now, but your goal is also gone. So, <laughs> eh. Goes to the terror at this point. Hyper Voice does 45. You have to synthesize it up back again. And the game Eternally is playing is like, do I Hyper Voice again? Make him waste one more synthesis? Because if he does EQ, you're dead. And this is your most valuable mon. So, yeah. And Rotary kind of wants to double into Vanillux at some point when the Zato comes in. Uh, but he can't really. Oh, he has three synthesis left. Thank you, Dockerich. 
um, three synthesis yet left. That's that's nothing, dude. And he needs he needs a lot more of them. He needs to pressure Eternally's team really hard right now. Um, like I said, he needs to do it with Slowbro, with landing a Fire Blast or Scald at the right on, on the red mon. Scald hits everything so hard except for the Healers, which threatens your team so hard. It's gonna be tough. You have to win like a few 50-50s, I guess. But yeah. Especially considering the Incineroar is Z-move and not Assault Blast, because if he was Assault Blast, you could stay in to just Fire Blast it instead of Scalding it. But uh, Z-move will kill you. Like every <laughs> the Delmites, the Heatalisk, and the Incineroar threaten Slowbro a lot. He does get in a free Slowbro this time, so he's gonna have to predict between Scald and Fire Blast. I would Fire Blast because it's permanent damage on anything. It's it's kind of fine, but if he rooks with Zatu, it's kind of problematic. So you could also double to Vanillax here. I kind of like that as a play too. Even if he goes into Heatalisk, the Heatalisk still takes six percent from from uh. Hail. But then again, if you get up Hail, your Synthesis is not doing anything. Yeah, he does Nightshade on the slack off. The problem with doing that is that your Synthesis in Hail is only gaining you 25%. Hmm. Now again, doubling into Vanillix there would have actually helped. Especially since Rocks are off the field. The U-turn into Slowbro is going to take a lot of damage on Toxic. Goes for the Fire Blast though, which is really nice. It only does 41%, even with Dry Skin. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. He has to do that two more times. And he has to go uh, Torterra here on the Heatalisk. I have a voice 42%. That's actually the lowest roll we've seen so far. Um, I think Rotary is just going to synthesis again. Mm -hmm. Tough, tough, tough. Heatalisk is so good in this tier, dude. But yeah. I, oh, he does have a voice again. does risk his, uh, his Heatalisk there. He actually gets a max roll there, I think. I think it's like between 42 and 50. So I got min, he got min and max roll. Now he goes, he has one synthesis left. Wow. He goes to Zatu. I think you just U-turn here with Zatu. If I'm being honest. Uh, don't see a good reason not to do that. Because you get chip off on Torterra, which is awesome. And you could go into Delmice, I think. Goes to Golbat on Nightshade. Okay. Well, that works too, actually. Because Nightshade made it force it to use another... Uh, Force it to use another synthesis, basically. Aerodactyl comes in. Um, if I were Rotary, I would click Pursuit here. I understand that it dies if you Pursuit and he U-turns again. But you need this Zatu gone. And this is a 50-50 between Stone Edge and Pursuit Dread. Last time he went for Pursuit and he stayed in with the Zatu. Eternally stayed in. This time I think Eternally is going to switch and I would click Pursuit here. Especially because Eternally has already seen Pursuit. And... Um, he figures, okay, so this is double psychology, right? He figures, okay, he, I know he has Pursuit. He knows I know that, so he's not going to go for it. Like, that's... <laughs> obviously, it's a 50-50, so... Rotary could go with a triple psychology and do it because of that. Etc, etc. You could just go on. And he does catch his Hatu with the Pursuit. He only has 12% of his health remaining, which means it will die to Pesimian's U-turn. Exactly. Um, but the Hatu is gone, which is really, really, really good for Torterra. Basically, it can... Earthquake now, which is going to do a lot of damage to everything, uh, but it also means it's, that he might get up rocks at some point. If he sacks off something versus the Heatalisk, he gets up rocks, and that's going to pressure Eternally a lot. It's going to wear down the, uh, the Heatalisk as well, but he needs his Aerodactyl in order to take on the Heatalisk. He can't ever sack this, so he's going to have to go into Slowbro, uh, which means he get, Eternally gets a U-turn out into Heatalisk again, and Heatalisk can click um, Hyper Voice. So I think Rotary's sack eventually has to be Vanillax. Then maybe get a Brox or EQ with the Torterra. As he does U-turn on the Slowbro, exactly. He kind of had to. Uh, goes to Torterra, I'm assuming. He could go Delmice here, actually. He could go Del Delmice and get a kill with Power Whip. But that's, uh, you know, it's an inaccurate move. You may risk the game. But at the same point, at the same time, you might have to go for that at this point. I kind of, I kind of like that play as well. Because you guarantee a KO if you hit. And I don't know if Slowbro wants to stay in, because it will take 6% this turn, 12% next turn, which means um, it will not be able to come in on Passimian very well next time. So, I could see Eternally go into Delmice here as well to click Power Whip. He should outspeed it. I don't expect the Slowbro to be very speedy. As well as your Delmice naturally outspeeds it and shoot from top speed. For like base 50, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the Delmice play a lot. If you go Heatalisk, you don't guarantee a kill, right? But if you go Delmice, you do. 
uh, because even if you even if he goes out into Torterra, I'm not sure if it's a, a two hit KO, but even if it isn't, then you waste his last synthesis, which is awesome for your Healy Disc. So I like that play a lot. Now he's doubting, probably <laughs> he's probably contemplating going out to Delmice or Healy Disc. I I like the Delmice play. If you hit, you guarantee a KO. Obviously, Healers doesn't risk anything, but that means um, Rotary keeps another stack, which I think could come into play. Potentially? He takes a long time for this turn. Yeah, they're in the end game right now. I understand. I would go Delmice. I would click Power Whip. You have the momentum, you get a kill. Delmice really doesn't do anything for the rest of his team anyway, right? I think Delmice is for, for the rest, Delmice is just a sack. This is the only mon that Delmice will outspeed, probably? Yeah, it should be. Goes to Incineroar. I did not expect that. Okay. Um, He is Darkest Lariat, so I'm assuming it's going to be Incinium Z. If he does that, I'm assuming he just gets a knockout right now. The problem is, if he's ground DMZ, then I don't know if Darkest Lariat will kill Vanilla because it's switching. You could, you could Flare Blitz here. I think I like Flare Blitz as a play too. Because Slowbro will die to Toxic plus Flare Blitz. Um, and he can't really slack off anyway. I think he needs his Slowbro. Yeah, he needs his Slowbro to win because Persimmon will otherwise win. So I like Flare Blitz as a play too. If he goes uh, Aerodactyl, that will die. If he goes into Torterra, that's not going to enjoy a Flare Blitz either. And if he goes Ice Cream, that will die to Flare Blitz too. So the problem with clicking Darkest Larry is I don't think Ice Cream dies. So I don't think he'd do that. The problem with Flare Blitz is I don't know if Slowbro dies with Flare Blitz into Toxic. But there's no way he's clicking Slack off here, right? I mean, even if he does, that's more Toxic damage next turn. And it will come the exact same game. If he clicks Skull, then I think Flare Blitz into Dark Toxic will knock it out, and Scarf Persimian just kind of cleans up. Especially paired with the Heatalisk. Yeah. So I think Flare Blitz is the play. It at least forces another 50-50, and it means that you either get a knockout or another chance for a knockout. Mm -hmm. If he is Dark as Lariat Z, then you throw that off 100%. You get a kill. It's that easy. Um, yeah. So if you're Incinium Z, sorry, Incinium Z, then you click Malicious Moonsault. If you're Groundium, then you click Flare Blitz. That's my opinion anyway. Uh, let's see what Rotary actually decides to do, because it's a tough turn for him too, right? For the exact same reason it's tough for Eternally. If I'm Rotary. I think I go to Vanillix. You need the other ones too much. You could stay in, but oh, losing this would suck versus Basimian. Basimian just kind of cleans up then. Even if he doesn't kill the uh, the Torterra, then the Healer still comes in. So it's yeah. I think I would. I, you kind of have to go Ice Cream. Man, tough. Rodri's timer is actually going down very low as well. Um, oh. This is a really tough turn. Like the entire match is... The entire match is basically in the hands of this turn. If Eternally gets a knockout this turn, then I think he just wins. If Rodri manages to live with whatever he does, then he has a good chance himself. Goes to Vanillux on a regular Darkest Lariat. Does not knock him out, which means Blizzard will get a KO this turn. Wow, wow, that was that was huge. Especially because letting Vanillux come in for free means you lose Amon. Straight up. So I think that just turned the entire tide of this battle. Uh, you Blizzard with the Vanillux 100%. You know for a fact that uh, Incineroar dies. Last time it did 43%, so unless that was a high roll, um, I think Blizzard is just always the play here. Um... I'm not sure what Eternally does. He might sack the Delmice here. Which is, you know, that's one of the reasons I said go Delmice the earlier turn, right? Because um, if you click Power Whip, then you just get a kill if you hit. Obviously, if you hit, that's like the important part. 
Um, so yeah. And once again, even if we went into Terra on the Power Whip and it wasn't a 2-2 two, two KO, then you still waste his last synthesis, so that's fine. That means Hyperface will just get a kill next time. Um, but yeah, now Blizzard. Blizzard's just gonna get a, pick up a KO. And Road will have one more sack than Eternally, which is so, so, so crucial. I think that just means he might win. Mm -hmm. It's still gonna be close. But it, it kind of depends on whether Turnley sacks, but I... Hmm. If he does sack the Delmice, then he will lose a Monty with Q, I'm pretty sure. Next time Torterra is in. Then again, he needs a Torterra healthy for the Heatalisk, blah 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 blah. But he does have an Aerodactyl still, which should be faster than uh, Heatalisk and should carry EQ. I think Rodri has this now? It's It's so close. This is such a good game, by the way. I like how they're taking the time to... Whether to calc or just to think. Yeah. Vanillax always clicks Blizzard here. I... Yeah, I don't see another way for it to go. Uh, the fact that Vanillax lift the move... I think it always lift Dark Lariat from that amount of HP. Uh, the fact that he lift was extremely huge. One of the reasons I actually wanted Eternally to click Flare Blitz... I understand that Slowbro resisted that very much, but if it was offensive, then I think it still died to Toxic. If it was offensive to Cinema, I think the Slowbro still died to Toxic. Goes to Delmice to sack that off the Blizzard. Yeah, one of the reasons I actually said that uh, that he should have gone into it either. It doesn't really do anything else. The only thing it really comes in on is a Slowbro on the U-turn from Pissimian. So Pissimian is just going to go for a U-turn here. Once again, I think that's like all it's gone for so far. <laughs> it's just it's just such a good move, obviously. Vanillax goes down. Do you go Incineroar or Plasimian here? Uh, sorry, your heal disk here. Um, because both invite in, in uh, both invite in Aerodactyl, which is hmm. maybe he should have knocked <laughs> because that would force a 50-50 between Dry Skin and going into Incineroar, right? This just means that... Uh, I, I would still just go Aerodactyl and click Earthquake. Uh, the problem with doing that is uh, Passimian actually will lift that. And he gets a free U-turn again. I think going to Terra and clicking EQ is fine as well. But yeah, if he went out into Incineroar, then... Actually, I think Incineroar was the play there. Because then Rotary had to go into Aerodactyl, and I think that was her 50-50. Because Passimian could just come in again, and if he goes to Slowbro on the Passimian, then Healless comes in again and clicks Hyper Voice. So yeah, I think with Torterra right now, you click EQ, and I think you pick up a KO. Like Passimian is really bulky on the on the physical side anyway, um, so it might lift the EQ, but it's also gonna take heal. Is he turning on to sack this off at this point? He does. Wow, he sacks this off to the Earthquake. His Healless has gone. Still one synthesis left on Torterra. Uh, at 56%, it might take a hit from Cosimian. It's not going to take a flare, but it's from this. Uh, see the word though. Hmm. What do you do? Oh, this is stuff. I think you click EQ. Yeah. Because this. <laughs> tough, tough, tough. Now, does he have Wing Attack or Air Lace? Because if he doesn't, then he's going to have to EQ and Passimian is going to take that. So, okay. Eternally has to go into Passimian here. If he doesn't, he just loses. Um, but if he goes to Passimian on the EQ, he should live it. Then he clicks U-turn. Oh. I don't think that was the play. Anyway, let me explain. You you go to Passimian, lift the EQ, you go for the U-turn on the Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl dies, you go into Incineroar. If he goes to Slowbro, you U-turn into it and you go out into Incineroar and you click Darkest Lariat and you get a kill. Um, I think. Or at least close enough to a kill where uh, U-turn could actually win the game from Eternally. So I think Eternally might have just choked the game away. Goes for the slack off. It doesn't really matter, but I guess you can just double scout now. And that should be GG unless Eternally crits one. Mm-hmm. 
I think he might have choked the game away with uh, staying in with Incineroar. Maybe he was afraid of wing attack or air release, but uh, he had to go in, had to go off him not being air release or wing attack. And I'll, I'm also assuming that Aerodactyl was banded. I haven't calculated any damage, but like that makes the most sense to me. It didn't take any life or damage um, or anything else with the Torch. Torch. Anyways, you, you click Scald twice with Slowbro here if you're Rotary, I think. Knockoff will not kill you. Scald could get a burn. It doesn't, but you should be able to live another knockoff unless it's a crit. It's a roll for a crit to kill, I think. Because, you know, it has to be a 28 roll and he did 27 last turn. And the turn before the 28. And then he has to crit. So, he doesn't crit. Scald is going to knock him out. And that is an extremely close game and well played by both sides. Well, I want to thank you guys all so much for watching. Uh, make sure to check out Doc, check out my channel. I hope you guys all have an amazing day. And I will see you next time. Later, guys.